Welcome everyone to another delicious nutritious adventure. This event is in collaboration with Plant-Based Nutrition Movement. My name is Carrie Bruno. I'm a pharmacist, a PBNM board member, and your host for tonight's event. Plant-Based Nutrition Movement is a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to educate, inspire, and support those moving towards a evidence-based whole, minimally processed, plant-based way of eating as a way to improve health and quality of life at all ages. Everyone interested in health and wellness is welcome to attend these events. Whether you've never heard about a plant-based diet, are curious of tr about trying it, or have already been following this way of eating for many years, we're all here to learn and help each other along the way. And with this in mind, these events will have guest speakers, who share their experiences and healing stories with us. These events are uh, held monthly on the third Tuesday of the month, and this program will be recorded and available for future viewing on the PBNM YouTube channel. These events are free to attend, and we also welcome donations to pbnm.org to cover our production costs. If you'd like more information about this group, PBNM, and future events, or would like to become a member and receive our monthly newsletters, go to pbnm.org. So starting us off, the term adventure has many different definitions. In fact, each individual can have their different interpretation of what an adventure means to them. So for these monthly events, our, or so far for these monthly events, our definition has been, has focused on exploring various cultures and highlighting new cuisines. But tonight's event is going to focus on a slightly different topic. For some, adventure means traveling and exploring new places. Well, in order to do this, it helps to be physically active. Maybe this means taking a walk around to see the sights or taking a hike or participating in other activities. And in general, an important part of any healthy lifestyle should include physical activity and exercise. And our guest tonight is gonna to show us exactly how to do that. Tonight, we are very fortunate to have Angela Fischetti as our guest. Angela is a virtual fitness, physical fitness and yoga instructor and massage therapist specializing in wellness for older adults. She began teaching seniors in her 30s at a time when she embarked on her own healing journey. Three decades later, a senior herself, Angela combines years of experience and research with a unique combination of empathy and encouragement for older adults seeking a healthy lifestyle. Angela also researches latest finds in senior fitness and consults with each client's medical practitioners for tailored workouts. Angela will be sharing with us tonight a workout on the go. There's no excuse to skip your workout when you're on the go, when you have limited space, you're indoors or outdoors, or even when on vacation. This workout will also show you how you can train every muscle group, large or small. After Angela's presentation, we'll leave about 15 to 20 minutes for questions. Um, everyone except the speaker will be muted throughout the presentation, and we ask everyone to remain muted to avoid interruptions and background noise. Um, please use the chat box, though, for any questions you may have throughout the presentation, and we will get to those at the end. Uh, so without further ado, let's get this event started. Welcome, Angela. I'm so excited that you're with us tonight. Thank you so much for having me, Carrie. I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited, too, because this is the first for me with you folks. And I was really looking forward to this. And thank you. You are quite detailed in the description of what I will be presenting today. So you kind of saved me that. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Well, glad I could help. And I'm oh, so great. excited to hear what you have in store for us. Well, thank you. Um, so, um, did you want me to go right on into it now? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So I don't know if you want to, uh, spot my spotlight me at this point or not. Yeah. So I'm looking to do that and it doesn't have the same capability as it did before. Okay. Um, let me step here. forward and see what I come up. Oh, with. I got it. We're good. Got it. Yes. You Perfect. Did. 
you did, you did. Thank you so much. <laughs> sure. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, it's so helpful so that I can see what you folks are seeing anyhow. So thank you so much for coming here tonight. Those of you who are attending live and those of you who uh, want to come to and see the replay. So yes, this is a workout that I decided to put together because of um, oftentimes people have so many different obligations and so many different directions and you know they, they can't be home and they, they don't have time to go to the gym if they're away and uh, or maybe they're in a small space or um, maybe they prefer working out outside. So you can do all of this because the equipment itself, I really call them exercise accessories, they totally portable. You can take them anywhere, anytime, pack them in a carry-on suitcase, put them in your purse, whatever it might be. Even the ball, the ball deflates and inflates really easily with like a little straw. So we're going to do a total body workout. And we're going to introduce the concept to you of supersetting as well. So this is basically working two different exercises back to back without any rest. But not at first. You're going to see how we kind of build on this a bit. So the accessories we'll be using today will be a sticky yoga mat. We'll also be using, or at least I will be using, two different types of exercise tubing. You'll see one that has these clip-on handles, so it makes them adjustable, and they basically act as an extensor for the resistance tube. And this is I need to use it for certain exercises for myself because I'm a little bit above five foot six. So you might find that getting an exercise tube with clip on handles could be very helpful for you. And then the other exercise tube will be with pre attached handles. Um, I do want to also uh, point out to you that these handles, um, they can be really hard. So if you have any hand issues, like the Puchin's contracture, uh, arthritic hands, trigger finger, you want to look for the soft handle, not the firm handle. Also, I'll be using a fit ball. And for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a nine inch, really squishy ball. And um, sometimes people have a Pilates version of this as well. I'll be using what's called a monster cord. I'll also be using a, well, it's got two names, a TheraBand, and it's also known as a DynaBand. Now, having said this, and also exercise loops, I almost forgot the exercise loops. And the reason why I'm putting it plural, because I'm going to attempt to level up on one of the exercises this evening with you to show you how easily you can do this with this type of equipment. But what you do need to know for a precautionary measure, kind of like a medical disclaimer, whatever you want to call it, basically, folks, all of it, all of it, including the yoga mat, are made from some amount of latex. So if you have a latex allergy, you want to look for non-latex or latex-free. Now, going into the more physical aspects here, and what I'm about to list are a bunch of chronic concerns that can be affected by inappropriate approach to exercise. These would be, if you have ever had any diagnosis whatsoever on your back or spine. And um, also in this same category, osteoporosis and postural deviation hyperkyphosis. So this is the one where a little bit rounded, a bit punched. Now, for these three categories, um, oftentimes you've been told not to forward flex the spine, not to bend down and pick up something. Also, if you are medicated or not for hypertension, you have vertigo or GERD. I want you to avoid this movement of your neck. That's flexion of the cervical spine we want to keep the head neutral for you folks. If you have any knee issues, well, we're going to be doing things like squats, deadlifts. So I'm going to show you something that you can do. It is an official squat, but it's done a little bit differently. However, for some people, you can do a full out squat. Just shorten the range of motion. Just don't bend the knees as deeply. If you have carpal tunnel syndrome, 
See the position of my hands, wrists? This is called wrist extension. It doesn't matter the position of the arm, forearm. This is wrist extension. Typically, this is considered contraindicated for carpal tunnel syndrome, unless you've been advised that you can do it, then you can. Also, I want to point out golfer's elbow, medial epicondylitis, tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis. Now, you folks are a little tricky when it comes to bicep work and tricep work because there isn't a consistent pattern of symptoms. It's very individual. So I would say you need to get advice whether or not you can do bicep, tricep work if you're dealing with either of those issues. If you have rotator cuff muscle issue, which is deep to the shoulders and um, pinch nerve at the neck. Now, for some of you, you've been advised, and this I'm gonna also bring into this medicated or not for hypertension. You might've been advised not to do this movement, overhead type of pressing. So maybe you've been told you can do it, but without any added resistance or an item in your hand. So this is what I'm gonna show you. So when I tell you these things here at the beginning of the class, I need you to pay attention because now you're going to be able to apply these to the work if, when you decide to join in. So I'm gonna bring my arms here. Notice that I'm not all the way up against myself. Remember, I'm doing this for rotator cuff, medicated or not for hypertension or pinched nerve. So I'm gonna be about 10 to 15 degrees away from the lateral sides of my body. Then I take the arms out and up and I'm going no really higher than shoulder height. Return to that 10 to 15 degrees. Now, what if I were to do this up and down like this? Well, that 10 to 15 degrees, folks, ties in rotator cuff, in particular, the pesky one called the supraspinatus that gets injured quite often and especially on females. So that's why I'm bringing up this exercise. When we do a shoulder exercise called military press, you're gonna do what I call delt abduction, going away from the midline of the body, delt adduction, going toward the midline of the body. Now, conversely, from those that I said to avoid the neck the cervical spine flexion, there are a couple of you that I need you to be careful with back extension, also known as back bending. So I might show, oh, a, a position like this, a stretch just to open up a bit. Now, if you've ever had a TIA, transient ischemic attack or a stroke, typically in any kind of back bending, it might feel really great to ultimately let the head drop back. There's nothing wrong with that. The neck can hyperextend. However, I would not advise you dropping your head back if you've had a TIA or a stroke. You too, keep your chin, your head neutral. So I'm just checking to see if there are any other issues. No, but I have to say, it doesn't matter if I didn't mention any of your chronic issues because I've got advice for anyone with a chronic concern. Please, um, I would invite you to preview the video first before participating. Look for it for what you can do because oftentimes, you know, if we've been dealing with pain for a long time, we say, uh, no, I can't, can't do that. And it's understandable and it's smart because we're protecting ourselves. But I do find after about 37 years of doing this work that people tend to get more narrow and they go, I can't, no, no to everything. So I'm just gonna ask you just to step outside the comfort zone when you're previewing the video, look for what you can do because I think you're gonna find something here, even if it's one exercise, okay? It's a place to begin you on your journey to exercise safely without getting hurt. So if you preview and say, I really don't know if I should do this or not, then I would invite the medical healthcare practitioner who knows your body best to preview the video as well and then help you make an informed decision because it's not about second guessing, it's about making an informed decision, folks. So we've covered all of that now. So this is how we're going to approach today. I put together eight exercises for us. 
And what I'm going to do is in order to help those with chronic concerns, those who might be new to strength training, those who might be new to exercise, we're going to do a few repetitions of each exercise suitable for you without any of the equipment whatsever. And, and, and it helps those of us uh, who are a bit more seasoned to review the form, to get a couple of other ideas on suggestions how to do something. And then after that, we're going to take those eight exercises, break them down into four blocks of two exercises. That's where supersetting will come in, adding the resistance, working those exercises back to back without any rest. And then we'll be tying in some stretching. We'll see if I tie it in during the workout or at the end. We'll see how it goes. I, I like to play that one as it is for the moment. And what else can I tell you? Yes, one other thing, and then we're going to begin. Um, a set is a group of repetitions. And typically, I advise people to work out between 8 and 15 repetitions. And that's what we're going to be doing today. And um, so Carrie, are you ready for me to get started with the actual movement? Are we good to go? Give me a thumbs up if you hear me, girl. <laughs> yes, good to go. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. I'm playing with you. Thank you so much. Okay. So we're going to begin here in an athletic ready stance. This is how you prepare. By the way, the entire workout is standing for today, okay? Because we need to be able to stand up a lot and we want to do so in a healthful fashion. So for exercise purposes, an athletic ready stance, I'm looking down, checking that my toes are in the same line as each other. Then I want to line up my ankles to the knees to the inside of the high pelvic bone. Now this high pelvic bone is called the iliac crest. We bring the hands to the inside. We point straight down, not in, straight down. Now, oftentimes I find females do this for hips width apart. Nobody's a linebacker. So you want to reel it on in and get to the inside of the pelvic bone. Now, I'm going to show you something to the side. Still part of athletic ready stance. Oftentimes folks have what's called an anterior pelvic tilt. So what happens is the pelvis tips and you've got this sort of little kind of sticking out the booty, little back bend going on. So we want to take a posterior pelvic tilt, also known as a pelvic tuck, draw the belly button in. You don't want to go so much into a tuck where you come into standing flexion like a standing abdominal crunch, then that is too much. So that is your athletic ready stance. So we're going to begin with what I call the mother of all exercises, which is the squat. Why? Because it's compound movement, multiple joints, multiple large muscles concurrently working, and it reflects activities of daily living, getting up and down from a chair, in and out of your car, and quite frankly, up and down from the commode. You want to be able to do all of this freely and easily. So this is how we work this. What I'm going to do is lift my toes inside my shoes. I'm not lifting the balls of the feet, all right, just the toes. And I'm going to think, sit back into a chair. So I pull out, inhale, exhale. I drive up from the heels, take a slight posterior pelvic tilt, and I'm squeezing the glute. I'm going to turn to the side now so you can see it this way. I inhale, sit back, exhale, I come up. Here's that slight pelvic tilt, that little pelvic tuck again. Now, what happens if you don't quite have that range of motion? Well, I'm still sitting back. I'm doing the short range of motion, like we talked about if you have knee issues. But finally, if it's still too much on your knees, then I'm going to have to ask you to having a willing suspension of disbelief. Pretend there's a wall behind me, all right? You're going to put your arms, but they will be straight. In the moment, for the moment, I have to place my hands over the edge here. And you step your feet forward. You come into what's called a wall seat. So literally, I would be leaning into the wall with straight arms, but you don't want to bring your knees beyond your toes. It's an option. So that means you can go as high or as low as your knees 
need and just hold there for as long as you can. And then you come out of it. So that is an option for you. Now, we're going to show you another exercise called a decline chest press. So here we have the pectoral muscles. What's also going to work are the front deltoid and the triceps. Looks like this. So this is a basic chest press out in front, but I wanna go decline up and under the breast tissue. So it's going to look like this. We have our athletic ready stance, arms here alongside, and I come out and I crisscross the wrist. I'm going to be using a band with this. So you take your time. It's very easy without any exercise accessory to kind of really whip through the work with speed. Uh, -uh. Apply your own sense of resistance. Now I want you to look right here at the sternum. Notice I'm not collapsing. I'm not doing this. We don't want to do that. We want to keep that chest up. Why? Because you want to be able to push a heavy door, push your heavy grocery cart, that kind of thing, and you help with the hips as well. Now, the second round will be another version of a squat. Think about the sumo wrestlers. So this is a sumo squat where we be, bring the feet wide. Still same concept, though. Toes, same line as each other. Toes lifted inside the shoes. And then I sit back into a chair. Now, for you folks with the shoulder issues we talked about, why not tie in an exercise for you right now? So we're going to sit back. I do delta abduction and exhale pelvic tilt. And I do delta adduction. Now, why do I lift the toes? Yes, I want to drive the work up through the gluteal. Therefore, you've got your body weight positioned back into the heels. But also, it's excellent to strength train your shin muscles, they're very forgotten. And when you do that, you help your balance and the health of your knees. This is the last one to show you here. We tie this one in with something called an upright row. However, not the best thing for a pinched nerve, possibly rotator cuff as well. And um, for those of you with different types of postural deviations. So, I'm going to suggest you folks do this. It's called a back row, but you're going to do it standing. You're not going to be bent over. Typically, it looks like this. But for you folks, we'll keep you upright. You bring your arms out, but it's the reverse of the chest work. And you can turn your hands this way or this way. This is one is called the narrow grip. Either way, but look at my scapulae, the shoulder blades. Carrie, I don't know if you have the microphone on, but can you see the shoulder blades moving? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So that's what I'm looking for. What I don't want, folks, is this, where you're jutting your head forward. That's not going to help you get your arms any further back. And I don't want you to be aggressive about pulling back. Those shoulder blades will move. Okay, this is what the upright row looks like. So I'm not bending the wrists. Oftentimes people do this and the elbows drop. No, it's elbows up to shoulder height. Think about this as an old fashioned scrub board. I had an aunt who used to hand wash her laundry in her kitchen sink and she used a board. Think about when somebody pulls their suitcase out of their trunk of their car, they're doing an upright row. So that's what those look like. Now we're going to move into dead lifts. So deadlifts oftentimes get confused with a squat because there are some similarities and it's also a compound movement. So I'm going to show you from the side. I'm going to review the basic form for the squat first, and then I'll show you the difference. So here it is, toes lifted. I sit back, inhale, exhale. So all of the breath is in and out through the nose. Now with a deadlift, I'm going to show you that it's a hinge from the hip. The knees are bent, belly button is in, hands glide along the legs. And yes, I do that little pelvic tilt, tuck it under, squeeze the butt. So that's the difference between a deadlift and a squat. What if you don't have the range of motion? Well, here you go. So no, I'm not doing a squat. 
because I'm hip, I'm hinging from the hip. Now, those of you with, who are told not to forward flex the spine, please go back to your wall seat. Do not do this exercise. But I'm going to throw you a, gir a curveball now on this deadlift. I want a Romanian deadlift. No, I didn't name it that. It's been called that probably literally 100 years. So we bring the feet a little wider than the hips, but it's still the same concept here. The arms are in front of the legs, toes are lifted. I hinge forward, belly button is in. Now notice I'm not dropping the head down, right? Hypertension, vertigo, GERD. So here is how you do an RDL. Your legs are wider. Now, why have I chosen this for this particular group? Because folks, you can engage your gluteal muscles more readily. You can feel it working here. And we must have strong glutes because oftentimes we fall because we don't have strong gluteals. I'm gonna go for one more just to kind of drive the point home. Exhaling up. So it's inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Exhale on the effort. Now, I'm going to do the shoulder press we talked about. But remember, your option is this for the delta abduction adduction. So a shoulder press is also known as a military press, also known as an overhead press. So I take my athletic ready stance. I bring the arms up. I will be using exercise tubing for this and exhale up to the ceiling, up to the ceiling. Am I touching my hands together? No. Breath in and out. Now, you want to think about pausing at the peak of the contraction for this exercise. It's up here. So you want to be able to put something up into a high closet or the top shelf on your kitchen cabinet. And then you want to be able to bring it back down without it crashing into you. Last one. Exhale and slowly lower. We've just got one more block of exercises and then we're gonna go into the toys. So the next one is bent over tricep kickback. Bent over, that means forward flexion of the spine. So we're gonna demonstrate it without doing that for those of you who cannot forward flex the spine, why not? Working the back of that upper arm, but you're also working the shoulders, folks, because exercise is never reductionist. It's never just one muscle. So I'm going to turn to the side. So a kick back tricep. I bring the hands by the waist, elbows go toward each other. They're not flared out here, okay? From here, in an upright position, we go back. So what we're doing is extending the elbow. The tricep is responsible for elbow extension, where the bicep is responsible for elbow flexion. Notice that I'm not doing this and then dropping down and going back out. A lot of people do that. The elbow is a hinge joint. Let it be the fulcrum for the movement. Now, if you want to do it bent over, you can. I'm showing you here bilaterally. That means both arms. But when we go to do this, I'm going to use the uh, exercise loop. We're going to do it unilaterally. And for the final exercise, this is called, I didn't name it either. It's called Arnold Curls. Yes, it's named for the man. It is, honestly. So um, here is a basic bicep curl. And then I'm going to show you the difference of Arnold Curl and why I chose it. So we bring the arms alongside the torso. We basically want to hug the upper inner arms to the outer upper ribs, but don't overly squeeze where your shoulders are hiking. And then you curl your arms like so. We want strong arms because we want to carry our own groceries from our car to our home. We want to be able to pick up the kids, the grandchildren, your beautiful um, non-human animals, you know, just to hug everybody. It's great, but hold them close, right? So it's bicep work. Now here's the difference. He's gonna be, oh, there's nothing to lean into now. And here are Arnold curls. So you have to go slow. And when you have resistance, folks, ah, now we tie in the osteoporotic site of the forearms and wrists. When you have the weights or the tubes, whatever you choose to use, 
You're going to feel this. So I'm going to go for one more. Exhale, notice pause at the peak. Control it down. And that's it. So we're going to take nice big shoulder rolls for the moment. Just kind of release everything. And play time. So the first exercise I called a fit ball squat. So what I do is I take the ball and bring it between my thighs, inner knees. It has a plug. Do not let the plug face your skin. So I bring it in between. And it's, you don't want to go too far back because the ball could pop out behind you. And I'm going to take, let's see which one I want to use. I want to use, here we go, the black tube. Yes, I have a big board in front of me, my little cheat sheet. And this is going underneath the arches of my feet. So when I stand on an exercise tube, it's underneath the arches. Okay, make sure the tubing is even on both sides. I get down, bring them up, and I'm resting the handles in the heels of the hands. So I'm not bending into that wrist extension. So carpal tunnel, be careful with that. So here we go. I'm going to sit back into the chair, toes are lifted, Come up, pelvic tuck, squeeze. Now, what did I do by adding the ball? Why did I do that? Because I'm tying in another large muscle group. That would be the hip adductors, those inner thighs. So I'm always looking for little ways to level up the work. You will find that once you add resistance, you can hear my breathing change. That's appropriate but you get to monitor what's appropriate for you. May I suggest something called a rating of perceived exertion chart, RPE. It's a zero through 10 subjective scale that has turned out to be quite accurate and it is advised for those of us with chronic issues, et cetera, to work out at an RPE between three and six. One more. Hold here. Easy now when you release because the tubing, the cord, whatever, they can snap away from you. The next exercise I'm going to do with this, let's just see if the ball behaves. Okay, the next one is going to be, all right, we're going to turn this into the ball show. Okay, now the next one is going to be that standing decline chest press. So here is where I grab a Dynaband TheraBand. So with any of the loops or bands, you're going to hold them up to the light and you're going to scan them. You want to make sure there's no little tiny pinhole. That's not one. I just double checked. Because if there is, you don't want to use that band. If it's near the end, then you can cut it. But if it's not and it's in the middle, get rid of the band because it could snap and hit you in the face been there, did that. So you might as well as not go through that experience. So I'm putting the band above my scapulae, my shoulder blades. Now, caution, I'm wearing a tank top. I wouldn't wear one when I do this exercise. If I were you, I'm used to this stuff because it can cut into your skin. That's why I'm wearing gloves. All right. So I'm going to bring the arms out in front, crisscross. I'm puffing up the chest. It's a lot of resistance and it's great. So if I wanted to hit the incline, I would bring the arms higher. You know, it just depends upon the intent of the exercise. The band will move around. You might have to readjust a little bit. Just keep that chest puffed up, crisscrossing the wrist. One more and release back to the fit ball squat. That's what is meant by supersetting. So I hope that makes sense now. Just want to see what you can see underneath the arches. Squat on down, resting into the heels of the hands, squeezing the ball the entire time. Toes lifted inside the shoes. Pelvic tuck at the top. Mm. 
Yes, when I'm working, I start to go quiet. <laughs> Couple more. Oh, two more. Right in there, the glutes. Wow. Hold steady, easy, easy, easy. Always make sure you completely release something before you walk around. You don't want to drag anything with you. You can trip. Decline chest press. Now, hit what you do here is to increase the resistance. You can grab more band. To release the resistance, you release some band. Or you can change to a different band, different color. That's why I brought two loops today, because I want to play with leveling up. Just keep that chest up and depress the shoulders. One more. I feel this. And release. So one block is down. The second block, we're going to those sumo squats and that upright row. So now this is where I'm going to use the clip on handles. You see how they make it extend the length of it. But do note, the clip on handles are usually those hard handles, so, so be careful. So I'm gonna step on with the arches. I'm gonna go a little bit wider. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can't get wider here and still get into this. Okay, yes, all right. Toes, same line. Look at the position of the wrist. Here we go. Inhale, exhale. Little pelvic tilt. Don't make it a big jamming forward. You don't want to thrust them forward. Just tiny. Couple more. One more. Easy. Careful, careful, careful. Now, we're going to do the upright row here. Now, we already talked about this. So some of you know that you're going to do your back row. So I'm going to stand on this tube. Feet together. Feet together. For me, at least. Are they even? Yeah. Now, I'm going to work. Oh, there we go. I want you to see. So now I'm going to crisscross the handles. This gives it a little bit more resistance. Here we go. And notice how the handles come toward each other on the way down. And they split at the top. You don't want those elbows higher than the shoulders. What you don't want to do is lead from the shoulder. Lead from the elbow. Exhale. Ooh, one more. And carefully release. Back to our sumo squat. That's that wide squat. Underneath the arches. Bring it out, pretty even. Yeah, wait a minute, let's see. Yeah, okay, sometimes you just gotta check. So here too, when you're standing on a tube, you can give it more resistance by bringing your feet out wider, but not so wide where you can't feel the pelvic tilt and the squeeze of the butt. And both, I know it's gonna sound, Silly, but you want to make sure both cheeks are squeezing, not just one. Sometimes that will happen. Exhale. You want to make sure that you, if you need to, you stop and rest whenever you need to, but don't quit. Rest for a couple of breaths and then come back in. Even if it's just one more repetition, which we're just going to do right now, because that's how you get stronger, folks. Also, make sure you keep yourselves hydrated, drinking water. I don't know about flavored waters and coffees and teas. I just don't. 
but uh, water, yes. Now, unless you have a kidney or a bladder issue that you've been advised not to drink, then you follow that protocol. Okay. Back to that upright row. You hear the deep breathing. I'm not kidding around. One more. Oof. And down. All right. Another block done to the third block. Now we're going to come into those RDLs, the Romanian dead lift, unless you've been told to work by the wall, right? With that military press. Here is a monster cord. It's called this for a reason. There are many colors. Each manufacturer is different but the different colors represent different resistances. I like quite a bit of resistance on this. So I'm gonna bring my legs wider. Now, if I were to do it like this, it's like, you see how it just really goes slack even down on the floor, right? So in order to make this a little more challenging, I'm gonna pull this puppy up while I navigate the, others, the other side through. A little bit more, here we go. So now I'm gonna grab low and the hands are close to the legs, folks. Now remember, this is a contraindication for those of you who are told not to forward flex the spine. You can do it one of the other dead, uh, one of the other squats if you want. The wall seat is always a way to come up with an alternative that is appropriate. I'm going to go for two more. That's one and two. I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate on um, the side. I'll turn around and face the side the next time with this. And we're doing this with military press, I think I said. Shoulder press. Remember, delta abduction, adduction for those of you that this is a contraindication for. I just want to make sure it's fully underneath that arch. So just take your time in setting up. Two more. Easy, easy, easy. When you lower. And back to the deadlift. All right. Make sure it's flat. Because sometimes they can twist and turn on you and all that. I'm going to go a little wider. I want to see if that gives me a little bit more resistance. Then I'm going to do the pull through on both sides. Okay, here we go. Let's try it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, man, Carrie, I feel it. <laughs> I can tell it looks challenging. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a black monster cord. And for this company, it's pretty hefty. But that's what I wanted. I want to be able to feel it. And I want, this is how I want to level up. That's the beauty of this type of equipment. It's so easy to level up. And if you have to take it down, if you don't feel your best on a certain day, then that's okay not to work out at your best. Oh, one more. <laughs> easy coming out. So especially with this, make sure that it's fully unraveled, all right? Oh, my goodness. I really felt that. Okay, what am I doing this with with the military press?
And yes, the sweat has begun. Okay, here we go. Fully see the feet. Just want to make sure. Okay. Mm -mm, it's not even, you can feel it. There we go. All right. So it's so simple to make those adjustments. Much better. Athletic ready stance. I go a little bit broader because this is a lot of resistance. Hit that ceiling. Come on. One more. Hit the ceiling. Easy on the down. And now for the last round, the unilateral bent over tricep kickback. So I'm just going to double check. Now I did check it before, but you know, for the cam purposes of you folks, just double check your loop because it could have that pinhole also. So I'm going to take one hand here and the other one here. Place the hand on the side of the waist. I think I'm going to take it this way. Yeah. Okay. I think. Nope. This way. Okay. I'm going to bend over. You don't have to, though, if you had that the forward flexion issues. And here we go. Notice I'm not letting the hand drop forward. Now, if you want more resistance, pull it over. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it makes a big difference. But I didn't like my range of motion just then. Just wanted a hint more. Do not drop that head down, hypertension, vertigo, or GERD. Ugh. One more. Oof. This really, you know, I, I have a little expression about this exercise. It bites right into the muscle. It's just, it just gets right in there. Okay. I want you to see the feet, elbow, back. I'm going to pull her over. Yeah. Belly button in. Protect your back. When you pull the belly button in, you're engaging the deepest of your core muscles, the transversus abdominis. It's your inner girdle, your inner corset. Oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And now we're going to do those Arnold curls. I'm using the clip-ons again. And careful, because if this is your first time using tubing with this, you're going to feel it. Okay. Shoulders back and down. And here we go. I'm gonna come a little closer so you know what the feet are doing, all right? You won't see the feet, but you know what they're doing. I just think it's important. Shoulders. Two more. Easy when you're lower. So let's see. I'm going to play with leveling up on the tricep kickback. I reserve the right to downgrade back to the yellow loop if I need to. <laughs> okay. This is just a little more resistance. I'm not going to pull my hand over. This is appropriate. Whoa. So we want those strong triceps because they're oftentimes assisting muscles or synergistic muscles to activities that are performed by larger muscles like the pectoralis muscles of the chest and the front deltoid, the anterior deltoid, last one. Wow. Woo. Okay. <laughs> and other side.
and you might find one side stronger than the other. There was a time uh, less than two years ago, I broke the scaphoid carpal bone of my wrist. They put a cast on me that was too high for me to bend my elbow very much. And therefore I knew I couldn't train. I got them to readjust the cast by two and a half inches. And I use the exercise loop. And I'm gonna show you where. I use the exercise loop here above the cast for six months. I worked out that way. And I was able to prevent a, a reversal to osteoporosis because I was once diagnosed at 60 with osteoporosis. It took me three and a half years to downgrade it to what I call age appropriate osteopenia because osteoporosis is a pathology and osteopenia is not. It's normal to lose bone density as we age. You just don't wanna be cocky. You've got to strength train and eat whole food plants and you'll be able to do it, but you have to have time and patience. <clears throat> Last two folks. Oh, and slowly down. And now we're gonna do a couple of stretches for a cool down. So first off, nice big shoulder rolls. Oh, feels great. Now, if you feel or hear a little snap, crackle, pop, don't be thinking right away, oh, it's arthritis. It's not always that. It's because we are moving the blood, all those beautiful body fluids into the joint. And that also moves oxygen. And you're going to feel or hear oxygen bubbles. Okay, so now, in our athletic ready stance, arms straight out from the shoulders. They're not behind me. So I'm pushing one wall away and the opposite. Who doesn't do this? Carpal tunnel. You do this. Straighten the wrists and see what I'm doing with my middle fingers. I'm really reaching out through them. It's a little hack that the ballet dancers do to get those more lovely long arms. So we're stretching out the entire anterior side, the front side of the arm and forearm, biceps, forearm muscles, wrist muscles, inhale, thumbs down, exhale, interlock the fingers behind the back, roll the shoulders back, push your knuckles down toward the ground as you straighten the elbows. Now, what if you cannot bring your palms together and you wind up doing this and you might even wind up doing this. So you're going to grab one of your bands or tubes, put it behind you and simply draw your arms back and you remove all that struggle and you'll still be stretching out the pectoralis, the front deltoid, the bicep. And interlock the fingers here, arms up. Notice kind of like, I like to call it the basketball hoop. I'm not looking for you to do this. I'm looking for you to have a nice long neck, soft, rounded elbows. Mm, and breathe, slowly lower. Let's get that tricep. So I'm gonna begin here with the elbow pointing down, opposite hand, encourage it up. When the elbow points up toward the ceiling, this is when you're fully stretching out tricep. But I also like to think I'm lifting from the side body, bring all of that in. And then you could even play with doing a little lateral flexion, go a little wider. And you can bend it over and get in all those muscles between the ribs, the intercostals. And then come back to center, release it down, opposite side, take it up. Now the hand is inching behind the head. And then if you, cause you don't really want it out here, but if you have an issue, you can take your arm and go to the wall and just lean into the wall like this, just lean into it and it'll help you keep that arm up. And maybe we'll take our little lateral flexion here, also good for the internal and external oblique muscles of the waist, responsible for turning and twisting your torso. Those intercostal muscles are breathing accessory muscles, responsible for 25% of your respiratory cycle. Inhale, come back to center, exhale, lower. 
Now, to offset deadlifting, right? TIA stroke, pay attention here. Remember, you're not going to drop your head back. Place your hands on your sacrum, the flat triangular plate at the low back, carpal tunnel. You're going to go like this, hands lower so the wrists aren't bending. And I'm going to start to come into that back bend again. But what I like to think is I'm maneuvering one side of the sacrum, then the other. And I'm just kind of thinking I'm sliding the sacrum down toward my heels. Does the sacrum slide? No. Okay. Now you roll the shoulders back. It's just an image I like to use. Puff up the chest. So TIA stroke, I don't care if you're down here or up higher, that's fine. Just keep your head neutral. Now, if you don't have any of those issues, folks, and you want to go for this thing, go for it. Yes, the belly will pooch here. Nobody cares. You can also do it straight knee. Inhale, lift up on the kneecaps to lift the head up to neutral. Exhale, release the shoulders. And that's what I got for you today, Carrie. I'm open to any questions you might have. Well, that was a great workout. You made it look so easy, but I can also tell by the look on your face that it was definitely challenging. <laughs> yeah, I definitely changed that. I get all these sort of like mug shots, you know, it just you can't <laughs> help it. It's registering on the, it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> yes, exactly. So one of the, during one of the exercises, one of your comments made me think of a question. Oh. Um, so you, you were referring to, you know, oh, you're going to feel this one. Um, so I know from experience in the past, if you're new to a certain exercise program, especially using some of the equipment that maybe um, you might not be familiar with or used to, um, you can get fatigued and your muscles can get sore after maybe just one workout. So how frequent would you suggest people do some of these exercises if they're new to them? Okay. It doesn't matter if you're new or not. Okay. Honestly. So what you always, this is the idea. Um, you want to do your exercises for strength training mm -hmm. on non-consecutive days. However, when we say that, I'm, I'm speaking more specifically, you don't want to do the same exercises day in, day out for strength training. You need to have a day off in between. Now, if you're brand new and if you're already feeling it from you know, one workout, which is very possible. So let me just explain that, that sense of uh, post-exercise muscle soreness. It's called mm -hmm. a delayed onset of muscle soreness. And so what can happen is anywhere from 24 to 72 hours, including hour 72, yes. okay, you can feel it. Now, is the feeling pain or is the feeling, man, I worked, man, I, I'm kind of sore. Is that soreness so harsh that it's preventing you from doing activities of daily living. If any of that is a yes, meaning, yeah, I, I can't even walk today. Well, then you've gone beyond your, your edge. Mm -hmm. If it's yes, still feeling this way at hour 73 and beyond, you've gone beyond your edge. So that is why I like to show the exercises without any resistance, because I know this can happen. Let me tell you, when I did the work with Amy yesterday on her show, my butt is so talking to me. So when I was doing this today, because it was a different type of exercise, different equipment, but oh my goodness gracious. So it doesn't matter if you're a beginner, if you're really seasoned. I've been training for 40 years. It doesn't matter. You're going to feel it. And you're supposed to feel it. It, yeah. it, it, okay, so a couple of things. I brought up that rating of perceived exertion chart. Mm -hmm. All right, very important, very important chart. If you're new to the whole thing, right? If you're new to exercise, if you don't know how to take your training heart rate, 
If you are on certain medications like beta blockers, it's a great chart to use. And also if you have, um, what is it called? Pacemaker. It's an excellent tool, this rating of perceived exertion chart. I would say folks, download it, just plug it in, rating of perceived exertion chart. But there are two kinds. There's a 10 through 20 and there's a zero through 10. From personal experience, I find that people are far more accurate when they're referring to the zero through 10 chart. You want to work out between three and six. I'm not kidding when I tell you, stay hydrated with water because it will wash out some of that sort of lactic acid accumulation. There's some, there's a, a whole new school of thought regarding that, but it does help with delayed onset of muscle soreness is to keep yourself hydrated during your workout. So, and plus, if you're eating the way we eat, how much water, I mean, you know, sometimes people say, go, go get your water. I'm like, look, yo, you don't know. I had like a whole pineapple before I, I'm doing this. Okay, I'm well <laughs> hydrated, you know? So that is the glory of our work. Um, of our food. But however, I don't mean to insinuate you don't need to get your water. That's mm -hmm. not what I'm saying, please. Okay. I'm just saying that the hydration we get from our gorgeous fruits, vegetables, from all of it, from our legumes. I mean, it's in there. It's in everything. And in, in our starches, um, plus the water you drink throughout the day, this is going to help lubricate the joints, lubricate the connected tissue of the muscles as well. Yes, I hope I, I totally somehow agree. answered that question. Yes, yes. I okay. loved the answer because, you know, in my personal experience, it brought back memories. When I first started working out at the gym that I'm at, I noticed, um, you know, obviously when you're new to something and even when you're not, like you mentioned, you get sore and yeah. you're working a new muscle group, even, you know, even if it's something that you, you've worked before, but you haven't worked it in a while, you get your muscles kind of get sore. Um, and the 72 hour window is real. <laughs> you know, oh I noticed, okay, well, you know, I did that workout two days ago. Why am I still sore? Um, but one little fact that I've noticed working out with people who don't necessarily eat the same way that I do, I feel like I am sore a lot less time and I recover a lot quicker eating the way that we do and hydrating. So That's it right. does make a difference. It is a huge difference in recovery. Yes. Our approach to diet and lifestyle, vast difference in how other people recover. It's, it's enormous. It's ginormous. I can tell you now, the type of workout that I taught yesterday, that was late in the day. Mm -hmm. And most people would not have been able to, at my age at least, at 66, yeah. come back into this the next day. But this is why I knew when I had booked the both of you, I was like, all right, I can't do weights two days in a row, but I can do weights and I could do bands. This is how I'm going to do this because I have to take that into consideration for myself yes. for the presentation and also want to be able to give you my best, right? Mm -hmm. My most. So I'm just like, all right, no way can I do the weights today, but I know I'll be able to do the bands in two. So th there you go. There's a method to my madness. Perfect. Well, we love it. And we're glad that you stayed safe doing it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's sweet. Well, if anyone watching has questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I actually have another one. So yeah. you, you talked about multiple different um, forms of equipment, the bands and the ball. And um, so if someone is new to using any of those, mm -hmm. is there one in particular you would recommend to start with? I mean, they all kind of work things a little differently. So um would, is there one in particular that you think people are most comfortable with uh, starting out? Okay, well, I, the reason why I can't give you a direct answer on that is because I don't know the issues. Yeah. You see, so when I work with somebody, if I know the issues, then I'm like, okay. What I'll always tell people to do, though, across the board, is look at your finances. Look at your finances and decide what is affordable for you to purchase. If you purchase one item, okay, I'm not a fan of purchasing just one, but if that's what your budget will permit and it will get you to do some exercises, 
absolutely do it. Okay. But I, you know, normally I would say probably the exercise tubes, but if you've got hand issues, I'm not aware of that's all wrong. Okay. Right. So that's why I can't tell you what to get, but I can tell you how to go about it. And I would always focus on my budget first, because I find that people, when they're very enthusiastic about returning into exercise, they'll tell me, oh yeah, I'll, I'll work a hundred hours a week on it. No, you won't. <laughs> and I'm going to buy every single piece of equipment. Yeah. No, don't do it. Cause you're going to blame me if you don't use it. Okay. <laughs> so you see where I'm coming from. So it's just look at the bands, the tubes, see what resonates for you. Typically with every one of these items, I don't remember if the, no, the fit ball didn't come with it, but the bands, the tubes, the loops, the monster cord, all of them, they come with a handout mm -hmm. with all a bunch of different exercises. So um, you can access that too. Let's say you're just going through Amazon, you can access that and those little uh, diagrams and stuff will pop up so you can see, well, hmm, I can do for my body, I feel like I can use the Dynaband more, or uh, I like those exercise loops, more, whatever it is. But you'll be able to see diagrams of them as well on how to yeah. use them. Perfect. Um, and one thing that I, I appreciate that you mentioned earlier was relating the exercises that you're doing to like daily activities. That's I think it. it gives people a different viewpoint um doing these exercises it's not just about like going to the gym and and it's actually making sure your body is able to do the exercise or the activities that you do on a daily basis and do them well and safely um, that's right so yeah I, I loved how you related that to that all my work even my yoga work I tie it into ADLs activities of daily living mm -hmm. that and functional movement Mm -hmm. um there's nothing wrong with wanting to look cute nothing wrong with that <laughs> but I can just speak for myself at my age I had also I had subclinical hypothyroid I no longer have it I had three high cancer markers I halted prevented stopped all of it I had endometrial hyperplasia it's gone I had two grapefruit sized cysts sitting on my left ovary and one orange size cyst on my right ovary, they're gone. No operation, no surgery. I exercised. I fine-tuned my food. For me, for me now, I'm not saying for everybody, mm -hmm. but for me, it's sofas free. Salt, oil, flour, alcohol, sugar free. Mm -hmm. Because my body was really, really toxic from 25, 28 years of being on psychotropic drugs and they manifested themselves in seven out of eight masses in my body. And they were almost all endocrine related. And the fact that the big ones were gone, I got threatened with, I, I had I literally cancer hospitals calling me daily, threatening, you're going to have to have a hysterectomy and stuff. And I knew, I knew with the diet and lifestyle that a, a lot of this could be remedied, but I had to be patient. Mm -hmm. Those cysts on that left ovary, you're, I'm tapping here, but you're seeing that as the right. But those cysts only left. I found out just three and a half months ago, they mm -hmm. were finally gone after six and a half, seven years. It takes time. Don't let others pressure you. Mm -hmm. And this stuff works for folks. Our different pillars of lifestyle medicine mm -hmm. works. Our diet works. Just be careful of the other voices. And yeah. I just was like, it's okay. I've been at this since 1987. I've heard it all. Yeah. I've heard it all. And I'm just saying my personal experience for me, I can't live any other way. I have to prioritize my food and my exercise because I know what it's done for me. I got mm -hmm. off those medications. I got off of them. I haven't been on them like seven, eight years. Yeah. Those psychotropic drugs. How? To consistent strength training, because the studies now are showing that it strength training is better than the drugs. The, side, the, the 
the effects from strength training versus the effects of the drugs much better. Yeah. And Dr. Doug Lyle was just recently on Chef AJ talking about that. And I just was like, I know, baby, because I know how I feel. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Very powerful. I know. Yeah. Very. Like you were saying, all of the pillars of lifestyle medicine, they all, they all serve a purpose and you can't be an expert at one and expect, you know, um, to right. be, to have a overall healthy lifestyle. They all play a role. And I have to also challenge myself. Well, I'm lucky because I love yoga. I have to have wellness. I have to have quiet time. I have to have non-weight time and where I'm stretching, moving, staying with my breath. When I went through the recent move, I was like doing yoga at like two in the morning because you know, the days are so long and you're pressured to get everything done in a really short period of time and all that. The way I managed it was through yoga. It totally calmed me down. It opened my body with all the, you know, the packing, et cetera. And it complements this very, very much. Yeah. Well, your the workout that you showed today was excellent. If Thank someone you. is looking for different uh, workouts that you um, have done or, you know, different workouts that they can try, is there a place that you have all of yours and where can they go to check out more? Well, thank you for asking. That's really great. I appreciate it, Carrie. That's so cool. Um, I have a YouTube channel. It's called Boomer and Beyond Wellness. It's not underneath my name. It's underneath Boomer and Beyond Wellness. And there you will find strength training in a chair, standing. You'll find um, yoga classes in a chair, standing, mobility work in a chair, standing work, floor work. It's all there. And it's all about um, helping those with chronic concerns. I have a whole separate series um, on what I, it's what I call have it your way workouts. So if you have chronic issues and you have gotten injured in the past from exercise, here is where you can do a deep dive into one exercise at a time. I'll go into one exercise, get into the anatomy, all this stuff, and just show you the one exercise I'll demonstrate it the way I did today, but just with a slight um, little bit of a, a, a change. I'll show the exercise with no resistance. Then I will bring in the bands, tubes, or whatever, maybe wrist weights for those, because sometimes with people with carpal tunnel, they can't hold the weights, but they can wear light wrist weights, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I'll show with a dumbbell, you know, with one of my dumbbells. So to try to help those of you at different levels and different places and time where, where are you at with your exercise, right? So maybe you're the one who got injured last year and is really timid about returning to exercise. So it's all there for you. And then I have a, a bunch of podcast shows that I've done and then almost every one of them are different workout routines as well. And you can always feel free to contact me by way of the contact form on my website, which is boomerandbeyondwellness.com, and just say, ask any questions, whatever, you know. Um, I can't get into specifics to you because I only reserve that for people I work with because I have to be able to have contact with their medical health care provider. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, Carrie, in today's day and age, I'm calling six, seven different specialists. Yeah, I believe it. I'm not kidding. And so, because otherwise I could really harm someone. And I know what it's like to get injured while you're dealing with a chronic issue and stuff. I don't want to wish that on anybody, but you can watch the videos, see if what you can do, right? Just like we were Yeah, and I like what you said initially is pick one, one exercise. Yeah. Even if you only get one exercise out of the video, that's worth it. That's right, because that's how you can build your personal approach to exercise to make sure you're safe, you don't get hurt, you feel a little trust level in yourself. You gain confidence that way through the, the strength yeah. training as well. And it's wonderful. It starts building the esteem. So it's really a nice approach. Yes, perfect. Well, Thank we will be sure to put your website and your YouTube channel in the um, show notes for the recording Thank of this. Um, so everyone knows where to go to check it out. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Got to get the word out there that there's a safe way for those who have chronic issues 
to train. There is, it's out yes. there. It's just, it's, it's hard to get YouTube to release the videos. So more subscribers because, mm. you know, they will release videos more if you have more subscribers. And so that's right. If folks can help that out, that would be great. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Appreciate we'll, that. We so will do much. that. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions in the chat, so we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Um, so thank you so much, Angela, for the um, invigorating workout. Um, <laughs> and thank you, everyone who was here live or who, anyone who's going to be watching the recording. Um, we encourage you to try something different. Pick a new exercise or work a different muscle group than you've tried before. Um, feel free to comment and let us know what you tried and how it went. Um, and before we say goodbye, I want to tell you about our program for next month. We are excited to welcome Barb Sherroot as our guest speaker. She'll be sharing about both her and her husband's health story and how maintaining a whole food plant-based lifestyle has been an integral part in their journey. She'll also be sharing a demonstration of a quick and easy bean burger recipe. So be sure to check that out and, and join us next month. The date for next month's event is Tuesday, the 19th of March. So we hope to see everyone back and invite a friend. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much.